Hey everybody, Mr. Lake here with another chemistry lecture video. This time we're talking about transition metals, the group on the periodic table that up until this point we've really liked to ignore and just say, ah, skip over those ones. We're just worried about the elements over here and the elements over here and the ones in the middle, they don't really matter. But we've got to bring them into the equation now. So we're going to talk a little bit about those transition metals because transition metals can form ions. They can be cations or positively charged ions. And so when that's the case, we need to use that information. And we need to know how to use the information or to um, portray the information about what their charge is. And it's tricky because a lot of those transition metals can have multiple different charges. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. First, let's start with a definition of the term oxidation number. Oxidation state or oxidation number is just another word for ionic charge. Technically, it means something a little bit different, but in reality, the ionic charge and the oxidation state are the same number. And so when I refer to oxidation state, I'm also referring to ionic charge. And I'll try and do both, but it's just something you're going to need to get used to hearing. So those transition metals, those elements in the middle of the periodic table. What makes them weird and the reason that we often skip over them is because they can have multiple oxidation states or they can have different ionic charges just depending on the situation that they find themselves in. For example, iron can be either a plus two ion or a plus three ion. It just depends on the situation. And that makes it harder to predict what iron is going to be because it can be either of those things. So it means that if we want, to port in we want to convey information about iron in a compound, we have to say what the charge is going to be. And if we want to figure out what the charge of iron is in a compound, we have to be aware that it can be multiple different things. So when we write names for ionic compounds that contain transition metals, what we have to do is we have to include a Roman numeral and the Roman numeral indicates the oxidation state or charge of that transition metal. So for example, in this compound, oxygen we know always has a charge of negative two. And so since there's only one iron, it must have a charge of positive two which means that this is iron two oxide or II because iron has a two charge or an oxidation state of two. Whereas in this compound, there's three oxygens and oxygen, you know, has a negative two charge. So there's a total of negative six over here. That means that, right, total of negative six and each oxygen is negative two. There must be a total of positive six over here, and if there's two ions, then each of them must be a plus three ion. So this is iron with a three plus charge or an oxidation state of three. And so we're gonna write this as iron three oxide. You can see that we can't just say iron oxide because there's different iron oxides. We have to include a Roman numeral to indicate the charge or the oxidation state of those atoms. So let's give one a try. Let's give one a try. And in fact, I'm actually going to disappear for a second. Pause the video for a few seconds, do both of these examples, and then I'll come back and walk you through them. Okay, I'm back. Let me show you how these are done. So this first one is iron and a polyatomic ion. So what we're going to need is we're going to need one of these survival guides with a polyatomic ion list on it. It's on the second page. If you look up SO4, that's sulfate. So we know that the second word of this name is going to be sulfate. And we know that SO4 from this chart, it tells us that sulfate has a negative two charge. And since there's one sulfate and one iron, it must mean that this iron has a plus two charge, which means that the full name for this compound 
is iron two sulfate. Now going the other direction, if we make iron three sulfate into a compound, what this tells us is that we're dealing with iron with a three plus charge and sulfate, which of course has a minus two charge. And when we combine those together, if we do the cross drop method or the mathematical method, whatever you like, we can see that we're going to need two of those iron elements and three of the sulfates. So we'll write it like that. So as you can see, both of these things are iron sulfate, but they're also very, very different molecules because this one just has one iron and one sulfate. This has two irons and three sulfates, which is really different. So that Roman numeral in the middle that indicates the charge or the oxidation state is super, super important. I'm going to stop talking for a second and ask you to do these practice. Pause the webcam. Sorry, pause the video and um, press play when you're done. All right, so this was probably a little bit more difficult than I let on because not only does this have you practice the transition metal Roman numeral thing, but there's also some binary ion compounds in here. There's some polyatomic ions in here. It's kind of a mixed bag, which is why it's called mixed naming practice. So let's take them one by one and go from formula to name. The first one is just a binary ionic compound. Calcium is not a transition metal, and so it's just calcium Chloride. The next involves potassium, and then we see something in parentheses, which is a clue that's a polyatomic ion. So it's potassium and OH, which is hydroxide. So this is potassium hydroxide. The next it's a little more interesting because copper, Cu, is a transition metal. It, it sits in this transition metal block, which means that we're going to need a Roman numeral after the name. And then NO3 is also a polyatomic ion. We're using all of the skills here. NO3 is nitrate. So we're dealing with copper nitrate. But the question is, is it copper 2 nitrate, copper 3 nitrate, copper 1 nitrate. We've got to do some kind of investigative work. So in this molecule, there is one copper and two nitrates. Well, we know that nitrate has a charge because it tells us in this chart here, we know that nitrate has a charge of negative 1, which means that in total, we're dealing with a total negative charge of negative two, because there's two of those nitrates. And there's one copper, which means that the copper must have a positive two charge, which means that this is copper two. Now, the next one is also interesting because AG is silver, and that is also a transition metal. So we're dealing with silver. We're going to need a Roman numeral. And then CRO4, it's in parentheses. It must be a polyatomic ion. CRO4 is chromate. But what is the charge on the silver? Well, there's one chromate, and chromate, we know, has a negative 2 charge. There's one of those, so there's a total of 2 minus in the compound, which must mean that there's also 2 plus in the compound. And since there are two silvers, each of the silvers must be plus one. So this is silver one chromate. The next one involves zinc, 
let's see where zinc is in the periodic table. That's also a transition metal. So we're going to need a Roman numeral. But this time it's not a polyatomic ion. It's just oxygen. So it's going to be oxide because oxygen is the anion. And when it's a monoatomic anion, you change the ending to ide. So we've got zinc oxide, but what's the Roman numeral? Well, oxygen is always a two minus ion because it's in the column where it has six valence electrons and wants to gain two. So it's always going to be a two minus ion, which means that this one zinc must be a two plus ion. So this is zinc two. You'll notice that most of the time, those Roman numerals are either a one, a two, or a three. Sometimes you'll encounter a four. Very rarely will you encounter something higher than that, but it's still super important. And that is going to be the end of today's video. So you should have an assignment to work on now that you know how to use transition metals in your names and formulas of ionic compounds. Until next time, have a fantastic one, and I will see you in the next video.